Alright, so this is Griffith's problem, or this is electrodynamics, uh, problem 2.33. And what we're looking at is an infinite chain of point charges, so a plus q, minus q, plus q, minus q. Okay, this just goes on off the page forever and ever. They're equally spaced uh, with a spacing of small a and uh, alternating signs. Alright. So we need to find the work per particle required to assemble this system. All right. So it's this metal and constant, if I'm saying that correctly. Uh, so, so what we want to do is bring in another charge right here. I'll just I'll make this one a star. Why not? So that we um, can see how much work does it take to bring a charge of minus q right here. It can be a minus q or, or I mean, it doesn't matter the colors. Anyway, you get the same answer uh, whether I had uh, put a, and it, you know, if, if we were just looking at bringing in this blue one here, uh, this positive charge, we would get the same answer as, you know, after we put this here, and we're bringing in this negative one. So we don't have to. bring in a, you know, what if we bring in a blue one after we bring in the green one? Do we get a different answer? No, nope, we get the same one. All right, so um, basically what we're going to do is just look at uh, the energy required to, to put this here based on all of these other charges, right? So the, the energy is just going to be uh, the potential created by all of these and then multiplied by this charge that we're bringing in. So we need to find uh, the potential created by all of these charges out to infinity, and we need to, um, and we basically they, they all add together. So we can look at the potential created by this one plus the potential created by this one, right? Principle of superposition. Um, so, uh, so yeah, let's get started. So uh, let's see. Uh, let's use green. So we're looking at the work required to bring in this star particle. This little uh, negative charge here, so we'll put a little star here. All right. So uh, first we uh, will multiply its charge. So first we're going to look at this first blue one, okay? So we multiply the charge of, of the one we're bringing in, and we'll multiply that by the charge of its nearest neighbor, okay? And then we have a four pi epsilon naught, and the distance between them is A, all right? Right, and they're opposite signs, so we get a minus sign here. Now we'll look at the next term in our series, which is, so we've done this one, now we'll do the energy, the contribution to the energy uh, from this particle, right? All right, there's going to be a plus sign because these two minus signs are going to multiply together. I'll go ahead and keep writing the, the q's, both of them, instead of just writing q squared for now. All right, 4 pi epsilon naught, but the distance here is 2a instead. And then, now we have another blue one right here, uh, interacting with this particle, right? And uh, so the signs are opposite again, so we'll get uh, a minus sign. We have our, the green charge here and the blue charge here, 4 pi epsilon naught. But now the distance is 1, 2, 3a. And now if we look at these two green ones again, we have another plus sign, the minus signs cancel out. There's a Q and a Q. Oops, forgot my little parentheses. Four pi, epsilon naught, and now we have a distance four A. All right, and this goes on forever and ever. So let's go ahead and factor out uh, what we can from this. Um, 
So I'm going to go ahead and factor out a minus sign so this first term will be positive when we write the, the sum out. So we'll, now we'll write the q squared. We have a 4 pi epsilon naught. And now we factor out the a on the bottom. Okay. So what are we left over with? We have uh, this first term. I'll continue writing it in blue for now. Uh, and we factored out the minus right here, so it's a positive. So we have basically a 1, right? This factor out front is equal to this. All right, so 1. And then since we factor out the minus, we have a, a minus sign. And the only thing different here is this 2 on the bottom. So we'll have a minus 1 half. And then from this one, we will have a plus 1 over 3 minus 1 over 4 and we you know if we continue this on we have a plus 1 over 5 minus 1 over 6 and it just goes on forever all right so this is the constant alpha which uh, Griffiths refers to in the problem statement this is the alpha that he's looking for and I'm rusty on my infinite series. I took calculus a long time ago, so I just looked this up online. This one converges to the natural logarithm of 2. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and save on paper a little bit and bring write this all right up here, right? So we're looking at the work required for this particle, which there's nothing special about this particle. Like, this chain goes on forever. Everything's the same. The, the energy required to bring in each one of these charges one at a time will have cost the same amount. So um, we'll, we'll just leave the alpha for the end, okay? So minus q squared over 4 pi epsilon naught a, okay? Hope this is all readable. And then we have alpha, which is the natural logarithm of 2. Okay, so here is the this Madelon constant uh, for this one dimensional chain of alternating equal charges with equal spacing. So you can look up on Wikipedia or whatever, but the, uh, the these can get these get much more complicated, it's much more general. So Griffiths mentions, you know, two dimensions, three dimensions. Well, also suppose you're throwing in different lattice spacings and, you know, maybe you even have uh, two kinds of positive charge, like a, a one with the charge of, one times the charge of the electron and one of the time, one of the, of, uh, two times the charge of the electron. And you have different, uh, different ions, so, you know, and then, of course, an equal amount of negative charge to, to balance it all out. Um, so anyway, these things can get really constant, but it's basically, you know, overall, how much energy you save, how much does one more ion want to stick to your crystal, sort of. So anyway, interesting stuff.